first video blog. <coughs> I've never decided to do this, but I don't know. Why not give it a go? So basically, why am I doing this? Mm, as you, some people don't know or will see me on YouTube, this is my new channel. Um, it's about my life on dialysis. I've been on dialysis now since July 2016. Um, it was my third year running. And I want to share <coughs> to people out there about my experience. Um, there's a lot of cures for a lot of things. But there is no cure for kidney patients who their kidney has failed and my kidneys have failed. <coughs> and they failed in 2016 because I had a heart operation <coughs> to close the hole in my heart. When I look back sometimes I think why did I do the operation? Should I have left it alone and not come to this stage of life? So I want to share with you people my thoughts about organ donation and what it's like to live on dialysis, basically. It would also be good to get people's feedback <coughs> on my videos on dialysis from other patients I may learn something new you may learn something from me a lot of people who see me on the streets or just at family functions would not even think I'm on dialysis sometimes it's very hard because we try to live the normal life and look normal and pretend to be normal but it's hard work so I thought what can I do to help the generations to come because people have this thing in their head that dialysis is a cure being on dialys dialysis your kidneys will get back to normal that's not the truth even I thought that when I first started and how wrong was I? My other option is in life is to have a transplant. <coughs> but kidney, organ donation, not just kidney, but organ donations as a whole is a very big subject. Huge shortage. And people like me, we have to live on hope that one day we'll get a transplant. But then, I just want to let people know that transplant isn't a cure. It's the next best treatment that we have to tolerate and accept. Even then, it can fail, reject, and put it back on dialysis, or potentially we can die. So I thought I would start with a small video um, explain what I do in my dialysis. I do nine hours. Now, before I was doing eight hours, I now do nine hours every night. When I go to bed, I have to connect to the dialysis machine at home. And I do nine hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There are times where I get a night off because I've been good. My results are better. Or it's safe for me to do so. But setting up a machine every day, keeping a positive mind, is the toughest challenge people will always find in this um, dialysis life. So then, you know, sometimes we're afraid to talk about things. My journey will explain what it was like from ICU to HDU to coming home, trying to find my recovery 
in the year of 2016. What challenges are faced? How do we overcome them? Life doesn't stop. And we shouldn't let it stop. I work. I work to keep my mind occupied and that's what keeps me alive sometimes. I could sit at home and do nothing, but then what good am I? So if I go to work, my other ambition is to, I've just finished a training program with kidney research in UK to become a volunteer peer community educator and that will allow me to go around give discussions, talks about kidney disease kidney research and about dialysis and transplant and lots of other things I can talk about <coughs> and also share my experience because I'm going through it until somebody who doesn't hit your home we never know what it's like before my operation, I was a different person, maybe. But now life has changed my perception of life. That at a click of a fingers, life can be taken away. You know, life can change. I didn't know I was going to end up in ICU for five, six days into semi-coma, or coma-induced. At one point, I nearly gave up. I had died in coma, in, in ICU, sorry. I've never done one of these video blogs, so I'm a little bit not sure to where to go. I, when I was in ICU, it was a tough, tough challenge me fighting against my body, fighting against the odds, and experience that even today it hasn't left my mind. It's been a tough time it was when I was in in the ICU. And it's very easy to talk about it sometimes now. Before it was very difficult because one, I even I was not sure what was happening. At one point I had died. I knew I wasn't there. There was people around me who got me back. One way or another, I, I'm alive. That's the important thing. I won't say who I met, what I saw, because when I do, some people think I'm actually mad. My smile sometimes isn't there anymore, but I keep a smile. We try to do things as much as we can, and life, life has changed to a certain point. <coughs> so, and so today, I'd just like to say thank you if you watched five minutes or just nine minutes of my first video. I'm sure as I do more I'll get better at it. And I hope my voice is clear. Um, sorry about the mess. Next time I'll tidy it all up. And it looks a bit funny. But this is my next step and I hope if you're watching please share my channel. I have a Twitter handle which is also in my YouTube um, link and it'd be great because I know I can give a lot back to this community and society. Because if I can leave something behind for the generations to come, I feel I've achieved something for them. Because I don't want other people to suffer. 
I want people to have the opportunity to restore what they have left and how kidney disease can turn into kidney failure very quickly. And sometimes it may not. So, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I can only tell you what I've learned, what I felt, and how to help you. Thank you.